All right, welcome to this problem. In this problem, we're going to talk about a person who's hanging from two different ropes between two cliffs. And this person is going to create a tension in both of these ropes. But this problem is a little bit different because um, the tensions are actually going to be different. Before, when we saw tensions in a rope, it was the same throughout the rope. But this one's different because the angles are going to be different. And he's going to tie himself off differently. So it says a 100 kilogram mountain climber is suspended between two cliffs by two different ropes. The left rope makes an angle of 30 degrees to the cliff and the right rope makes an angle of 60 degrees to the cliff. Find the tension in the left and the right ropes. Okay, so these are the ropes here, these black lines here. I drew a horizontal axis here just so we can have a reference point. Okay, I could also draw it as a vertical axis too if I wanted to, so I'll go ahead and just do that just to kind of show you that what we're doing here, we're just we're, we're going to keep things in the standard x and the y direction. So here's our person here, okay? And let's pretend like our ropes are going to pass into that center of that coordinate system like that, okay? So I want to find out what's going on with this person. What are the what are the, the tensions in the ropes? So how do I go about doing that? Well, the first thing that I do when I have any type of a force problem is I need to define my positive x and my y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and just define that standard like this. My positive x is to the right my positive y is going to be up, okay? And over here on the right, I, it says that this makes an angle of 60 degrees uh, to the base of the cliff, okay? And over here on the left, it says this makes an angle of 30 degrees, even though it's, n you know, it's not to scale. Let's just pretend like that is to scale. That's 30 degrees there, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at for some symmetry here. I'm going to, I'm going to, take a horizontal here and I'm going to just extend it up just so you can see this. And I'm going to make a, you know, uh, a horizontal here that's going to be parallel to this line. So you're going to see what I'm going to do here in a minute. I'm going to basically create the complement to this angle here. This is 60. I'm going to write this as 30 here. Okay. And then I'm going to be able to take some geometry in here. This is 30. So this is going to be alternate interior angles. That's going to be 30 degrees also. Okay, because I really need to get the angle here from the rope that it makes with the person. This angle here, I'm going to take the complement to this one, which is going to be 60 degrees. And I'm going to be able to apply alternate interior angles to this, which is ultimately going to be 60 degrees right here. Okay, so now I'm just setting up that geometry. There's my geometry. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this line here just because uh, I think it's in the way. So what forces are acting on this person? What's going on? Well, the person is hanging from the rope, so we're going to have a situation where we have a static situation where the sum of the forces are going to equal zero from Newton's first law. Uh, first law, is, again, is just um, saying it's, a, it's an equilibrium, basically. Okay, It's the second law, but it's saying the sum of the forces equals zero. So in this case, I'm going to have a force of tension going away like this, okay, and I'm going to have a force of tension uh, going away like this. So. The first one here, I'm going to have this, this force of tension uh, going along here. So I'm going to draw it in, in green here. Okay. And I'm going to make that x component about two blocks this way. You're going to see why I do that in a minute. So this is the force of the tension right. Okay. And then I'm going to make this one going about two blocks this way. So we can see that runs along. They're more or less about the same. This is going to be my force tension left, like this, okay? And of course, I'm going to have a weight of the person. The person's going to weigh something, right? So we're just going to make that equal to about Fg there of the person. So these are the forces now of the person. Uh, you can write the arrows for your vectors there just to, for completeness sake really. But these are just the magnitudes. So That's the complete picture. Those are all of the forces acting on this person, the two tensions and the gravity. In this case, the tensions are not going to be the same because these are making different angles. So the next thing I do is I write the components of the tension out. Okay. So this component right here is my x component going in the right direction. So that's the force of the tension of the right rope. That's the x component. Okay, that's going to equal FTR cosine 30. 
Okay. Then I got to talk about the x component going in this direction. So it's going to be force tension left in the x direction is going to be force tension in the left cosine 60 degrees like this, okay? So these are going to be balanced. The right the left's going to equal the right, the up's going to equal the down. My up force here, okay? I have a component here that's the green component here. That's going to be my force tension of the right in the y direction, which is going to be force tension sine 30 degrees. And then I have my blue one up here. So that's going to be about two and a half blocks, right? So maybe come up here like this. Just trying to make these balance each other out more or less down here. So this force tension in the left of the Y is going to be force tension left sine of 60. Okay. This one should have been force tension right sine 60. Okay. So these are all of my components now. It's important to do something. After you've written the components, I need you to strike these out because these are no longer here. Okay. So strike these components out once you resolve these into components. Okay. After this point, it becomes very easy, actually, to start solving this. All right, so now, after we have the free body diagram, we're going to start to write out the governing force equations here. I'm going to start out with the x direction here. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x equals 0. Okay. What that means is that this is an equilibrium, and whatever's on the left is going to equal whatever's on the right. So I can actually write it out like that. I can say whatever's on the left equals whatever's on the right because they're balanced out. Okay? It's not moving. It's just hanging there. So what's on the left here? I'm going to start writing this all in black now. Whatever's on the left there is going to be F T L cosine 60 equals F T R cosine 30. Okay? So that's going to be my governing equation now for the x direction. Okay. Next, I'm going to talk about my y equation here. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the y equals 0, like this. Now I can basically say whatever's in the up direction is going to equal whatever's in the down direction. In other, the, in other words, the ups equal the downs. Okay. So whatever's up here is also going to be equal the down here. Okay. So I can write this new equation out here, this governing equation here. So my up forces are going to be F T L sine 60 plus F T R sine 30. Okay? And that's going to equal F G. It's going to equal my down force, right? Okay? So what are we looking for here? Okay. Well, I've got two unknowns. What are my two unknowns? I don't know the tension to the right. I don't know the tension to the left. These are my two unknowns. Okay. So I'm going to circle it in both equations here. So I know my, my angles here, and I know my FG, right? That's just going to be MG, right? And I know what cosine of 30 is, and cosine of, cosine of 60, and cosine of 30 are, and sine of 60, and sine of 30. I picked some pretty simple trig functions to work with here. So when we start working through this, we're going to have to substitute one of these into the other to get a, a final answer here. But let's just go ahead now and start substituting the values here. Well, we know cosine of 60 is 1 half, right? So I can basically write this now as FTL okay, times 1 half here. It's times 1 half. And that's going to equal FTR times root 3 over 2. That's still equation one, just substituting it out. Now equation two, I can say FTL sine 60, which is just going to be root 3 over 2, plus FTR sine 30, which is just going to be 1 half. And that's going to equal FG. What I'm going to do to make this a little bit simple, I'm going to assume that G is going to be 10 in this case. So I'm going to make my G. I'm just going to say here, assume 
g is approximately equal to 10 meters per second squared. Okay, I'm just going to use 10 to make some round numbers here, so this is a pretty simple problem to deal with. So, we know that f of g is simply going to be mg, okay? So remember f of g, just, just, just so we kind of have, just remember here, this is going to equal mg, okay? So my mass was what? 100 kilograms, and my g here, I'm just going to use 10 just to keep it simple. So, let's go back to our equation 1 here. I've written cosine of 60, cosine of 30, so now I can just simply write this and cancel out some of these terms. I can cancel out this 2 on the bottom here, right? So I can just write this now and say, well, FTL equals root 3 times FTR. Okay, so that's nice. That's, that's turning into a real nice simplified equation, right? And on equation number 2 here, I can multiply everything through by 2, right? on this side, so I can say uh, root 3 times FTL. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, okay? So I'm just going to times 2 on this side, times 2 on this side, so it gets rid of this 2 on the bottom, plus FTR is going to equal 2,000, okay? So now my equations are getting a lot more simplified. It's going to be a lot easier to work with them now when I substitute one into the other. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute for FTL into equation number two. I'm going to substitute what it is over here from equation number one. So I'm going to go over here, okay, so right here, this value here, this is FTL, right? Okay, I'm going to substitute that into equation number two right there, okay? So I'm going to say, uh, equation number one, I'm going to substitute that into equation number two. Okay, So what we're going to get with this modified equation is I'm going to have root three times whatever was FTL here, which is just going to be root three FTR, okay, that's what I just substituted in from here, right, plus FTR equals 2,000, okay. So now I'm going to multiply these across, so I'm going to get 3 FTR, because root 3 times root 3 is 3, plus FTR is going to equal 2,000, okay? So I'm going to end up with 4 FTR, or the tension in the right, is going to equal 2,000, okay? So my force of tension in the right is simply going to be 500 Newtons, okay? And so now I've solved the tension in the right. Pretty simple, right? I didn't even need to get out a calculator to do that. I just used key trig ratios, okay? So the tension in the right, just to, re just to refresh, was the green one over here on the right. Now, this tension over here on the right, I'll circle it in green so you can see it, this tension over here on the right is going to be different than the tension on the left. I go back up here to my governing equation here, equation number one, and I can just plug it in and solve, right? So I can plug it into equation number one up here. So I can say, okay, well, equation number one says that the force of the tension in the left is going to equal root three times the tension in the right. Okay, the tension in the right is going to be 500 newtons. I keep going here, and I simply get that the tension in the left is just going to be 500 times root 3 uh, newtons here. Okay, so the tension in the left is going to be 500 times root 3 newtons here. Okay, so that's, that's how you solve your two tensions. Clearly, the, clear, clearly they're different, right? So this tension here uh, was, was smaller, okay, than this tension here. Okay, so, and that's how you would solve a situation where you have an uneven tension uh, in two different ropes from a person hanging in a case of static equilibrium. All right, that's all I've got for you tonight. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.